Well, good morning. I know it's a little bit early for us to be here, but uh, we have a candidate running for Lane County Commissioner for the Springfield area who is going to talk with us today. And we are at a solar company. These people, um, because solar energy and building is super important to our candidate, uh, Joe Burney. Um, so he wanted to meet over here at a solar company here in town, um, looking for new ways to bring business to the community and doing things in our town. And we have a little controversy here that we're going to address it too. So we're not going to, uh, advanced energy systems is where we are. And we will get into some controversy as well. We got things to talk about. You're going to be in the background, just so you know. And you are? Hi there. I'm Eric Neal with Advanced Energy Systems. So what do you guys do? Well, we're a, an EPC, an engineering procurement and construction company in the solar industry. That's a big word. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of TLA, uh, three-letter acronyms in our industry. And we do, uh, among the type of business we work on, is uh, commercial, residential, and municipal type projects. So you're putting in solar panels for big businesses. Quite a number, yes. Yeah, and real and now doing residential as well. We, do, we are, yeah. There's been, uh, we've had a couple of good years with the... In, several other companies in our area that we've been working together doing residential. So why is it important to you to get a county commissioner candidate who's going to, or actually a county commissioner, who's uh, going to, uh, to look at building and, and urban growth boundaries and things that provide more, more jobs? Well, we, I mean, at the heart of it, we're a construction business. And uh, the economy, when it's on a roll and construction's going, we're, we're doing well. We're employing, right now we're at 20 20 folks between our field crew and our office staff and salespeople. And um, Joe Burney, I know to be a, an efficiency expert and knows a lot about construction and how to create jobs. And he's going to be sensible about the environment. You know, I, solar doesn't work everywhere. There's some places that, you know, they're shady or they're protected deserts, that sort of thing. But uh, our future is going to be in solar energy. And if you can make it work in Oregon and Eugene, you can do pretty well, huh? You bet. Yeah, we, we, got it. we have our German cousins to thank. They, they don't even have as much sun as we do here in Oregon. And they, they are the pioneers in the business. And um, Solar World is a manufacturer that's in Hillsboro, Oregon, too, that's um, got, uh, they'll, they're got several hundred employees there that manufacture our product. All right. Thank you. So, Joe? You, this is Joe Burney, you guys. Yes, sir. So uh, running for county commission, um, yeah. we'll mention the opponent's name one time against Sid Lichen, who is the uh, commissioner for the Springfield District area. And uh, you're taking on this challenge. Why? Well, one, I'm retired and, and I'm able to do that. Um, I couldn't do it if I was still working and I couldn't do it if I was raising kids at home. Um, but, but you've been a businessman. I've been an educator. I've been a work. A, a, a workforce training guy and I've owned several businesses that's correct and the last one relates to what Eric was talking about the last business um, we created an opportunity for Lane County to open up financing and unleash money for uh, residential solar and energy efficiency um, back then Lane County was in turmoil the commissioners were dealing with with disarray wrongful terminations and they were more interested in finding scapegoats at that time than they were creating economic opportunity, they weren't interested. So we took that same model and um, we found uh, the rest of the West Coast was interested and that is now a billion dollar plus new market in residential energy efficiency and solar. Um, so when you took that to the, to the commissioners and you feel like nothing got done. Well, they, nothing they, did get done. Uh, one set of commissioners unanimously approved that several groups, me, mine among them, give them a work plan to provide new types of financing um, for, for this, you know, for these construction. And they did not, and then it, there was an election, a new group came in in 2010, and they have not, they did not even look at the plan. They so paid what, for it, but they didn't even look at it. So, seriously? Yeah, seriously. So what did that tell you? That told me I needed to go to where the market was, not to where the politics was. <laughs> so now why are you going to where the politics is? Because this is where I live. I mean, Lane County's been my home for 26 years. I was born in Oregon in this rural outpost community 65 years ago called Beaverton, Oregon. Oh, I was uh, born in Hillsboro. We're neighbors. Yeah, is that right? <laughs> well, I, I thought I grew up in a mansion, and I visited the house that my dad built, and it's 1,100 square feet. <laughs> so times have changed quite a bit. But... Um, Moved back to Lane County 26 years ago. It's my home. It's where my children are. It's where my two grandchildren are. Um, I'm not going anywhere. So to be on the commission, you think we're missing out on things because of process? 
Um, I think when Rick, whenever politics trumps just looking at opportunities or solving problems, we're missing out. And that's one reason I'm running for commissioner. I, th I don't hold anything against uh, my opponent, but I do believe that everything has gotten too politicized. If I may, just, I'm sorry. No, you go right ahead. You, it's your show, man. You, <laughs> no, no, I'm, it's I'm your gonna show, try, I'm going to try to interrupt you, but you just keep going, <laughs> well, man. Well, I, I think that um, when, when people don't know how to move money to deal with certain problems or create opportunities, their default often is politics. It's talking. It's, it's, it's arguing. And I think we have a group of commissioners that don't have any business experience. And, and that's one of the reasons I'm running, absolutely. I asked people this morning on my Facebook page, so are you one of the people who, if you see something that's a problem, you, you hide from it or do you walk into <laughs> it and try to find a, a solution to it? And I think there's a lot of people that we, we don't want to, we want to avoid things. Well, look, can I put it to you this way? Yeah. Um, there's a reason why I was the guy with, the, with seven frozen fruit and vegetable processors 30 years ago and with the Teamsters Union and with the United Farm Workers Union created the country's first migrant farm worker training center. Um, there's a reason why um, I was the founding executive director of the Lane Regional Workforce Quality Committee 25 years ago and brought $8 million into Lane County, half of which went for retraining displaced timber workers and the other half created Lane County's first ever school to work program. I'd say I'm a guy that looks at a problem and deals with it head on. And you think we need more of that at the county level? Yeah, and more coalition building and more listening to the little guy, not just the rich donors. Um, we need to open up county government to the people that county government is supposed to serve. Do you think he, people care anymore whether you're a Democrat or Republican or, or where you sit on that? Do you think? Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> I, sometimes <laughs> I, I, ask, que sometimes I ask questions and when you start, you yeah. just go. No, okay. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people do. I, I don't, but I think a lot of people do. Um, so, but I think as we move forward, again, it's especially here where we live, not the national political stuff that's going on, but here locally, I think people care about issues that they care about. Affordable housing, homelessness, and how that's affecting other people, creating more work, and make sure, making sure that when possible, that work can pay prevailing wages and offer flexible and fair benefits, at health insurance, retirement. I think people care about that. Okay, so let's get into this. You're getting some some flack from your opponent um, in a mailer that went out. Oh, you noticed. <laughs> <laughs> that 72%, uh, I guess, um, I don't know if this is accurate, but um, I don't assume anything anymore, but 72% yeah. of your money came from unions. Like that's a bad thing, yeah. So what do you say? What do you say? What do you tell people? What do you say well, to you your know, opponent? Two things, if I may, and you may want to interrupt on this, but two things. One is I think he's forgotten where the term union comes from. Union is a religious term, and it is noble. So, for example, my son got married this last summer. When two people enter into holy matrimony, they enter into a union. When we in our communities choose to worship God with others. We enter into a faith community. Union is the root word of community. When we have holy communion, that's union. So when working people that have to work for a living join together for security and for protection and to have a voice, that's called a labor union. And labor unions are not just in it for their own members, they're in it for everyone that has to work for a living. Um, we have a 40 hour work week. We have, most of us have weekends. This country has child labor laws that have ended child labor. labor. That's because of unions. So I think he forgets the nobility of the term, one. And then I was gonna say another thing is, why does he not understand the working class and the pride of the working class? My dad was a machinist. My mom was a mom. I mean, I grew up in a working class household. I'm proud of it. Um, my opponent has never had to work a day in his life, and that's not his fault. 
it was his circumstance. He was born into a very wealthy family here in Oregon. Um, when you don't have to work hard for something, um, it doesn't have value to you. So does that hurt when you get something like that, when a, a piece comes out like that? Um, because there, and, and I'm going to be really careful because then we'll come talk to somebody else here too. But let okay. me just go with my thought sure. um, so that I can get this out there. So sure. there, I, I think unions have been a bit beaten up um, by politics. Mm -hmm. um, that's now, it's, in some people's mind, that's a negative. And it seems like this is playing off that negative then. Yes, that's correct. And, you know, that's another point. Um, hey, I'm just a guy. <laughs> I'm trying to provide an alternative. You don't um, need the job. I don't need the job. I want the job. And I want the job because too many people are being left out right now. And I want the job because I believe our current Board of Commissioners is squandering opportunities um, to move money to expand services to help people. I mean, it's as simple as that. So somebody says, I'm assuming that means, yes, your funding is coming from unions. Oh, I'm proud of the fact that a little over half of the funding I've received is from labor organizations. Yeah, but, and I'm also proud that the education community is supporting me, environmental community is supporting me, and I'd like to point out that oftentimes politicians will try and pit people that, are in, that want to be stewards of the environment against people that want jobs. And that's just wrong. There's, there's, I've built a coalition of people that oftentimes are on opposing views of, on issues, and they're all for me, and why are they for me? Um, can I promise anything? I can't promise anything other than that I will work hard with integrity for the benefit of the most people possible, and that I'll be open, which in Springfield, we haven't had a commissioner that anybody's seen for a long time. Okay, so. Which unions? Here's one right here. You are? Good morning, Rod Sprinkle with the Iron Workers Union. I also represent uh, the building trades in uh, Lane, Coos, Curry, and Douglas County. So why are you guys supporting Joe then? Joe, Joe gets it. He said uh, just what, what we're about. We're about family living wage jobs. We are fully self-funded. We give back to the community as part of a union. We have our own retirement, our own pension, um, health care. So we, as, as part of the building trades unions, we support the community. We don't take away from the community. Do you, are you looking to Joe or somebody in that position in Springfield especially to look at things like the urban growth boundary and why we don't have affordable housing and building um, and, and making it easier for people to get um, to build projects rather than it seems like there's, I mean, I talked to a guy the other day, there's so much red tape. You pay as much in permits and fees and all this stuff. It's, it's hard to get a, it's hard to get a building or a business in downtown Springfield even still. So, so that's, that's one of the, the reasons that we do support Joe. We've endorsed Joe as uh, iron workers, as the building trades, um, because he works with, with the building trades and, and working people in general. What do you, since you guys, since you're with the union, I, I never got to really sit here and do this, but it's kind of, what, how does that feel when you see a, pan, a, a, a piece come out and what, I, I'm being trying to be careful, but I guess what, what we used to call those in the news business with a, a hit piece, and when you see that coming out and you're the, you're the, you're the alleged bad guy, right. um, well, you know, you know, talk to people. I, I right. want to hear what you have to say because I think it's really easy to put stuff like that out. But yeah, the, you're, the guy, you're the guy, you and yeah. all your families are the ones that that's, that's right. about. And, and the honest answer is it makes me and uh, everyone I work with pretty angry that, that someone will degrade us like that and, and, um, and try to misinform people about how unions actually work, that, that uh, we don't give back to the community, which is the complete opposite. We, we add to value to the community. So it, it, you, uh, you think it's because they feel like you have too much control over an election or something like that? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, that's a great question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, well, I guess, I guess then people could turn the question around and say, where's everybody else getting their money? I right. found out when I ran for office, too, it was always, this is where Rick's getting his money, so where's his opponent getting it? But nobody ever asked. Right. <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. like, once you got the hit piece, it was, it was never asked of the other people. So I guess yeah. we all should uh, air our laundry before we uh, start doing stuff like that. Makes sense. All right. <laughs> so, Joe, <laughs> you know. Um, Can I get on this side, Rick? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for light. 
Thanks for yeah, coming. no, you're welcome. We well, you already got yeah, this. Now it looks like you already got this tan. super tan. Yeah, uh, yeah, you got this super tan. So, where? Um, tell me more about who you are. Like, why? I mean, I guess, you know, as a guy who ran for office and understands how you get beat up. Yeah. Why in the hell do you want to do this? <laughs> you know? I don't want to get beat up, <laughs> um, and I don't. I'm not enamored with status quo politicians on either side of the aisle. And, and I just did it because, you know, again, I've got grandchildren here, I've got children here, I wonder what kind of a future we're leaving them, and I really feel it's my civic duty. I mean, hey, I'm 65 in a week. This, ain't, this is not a new career for me. This right. is a civic duty deal, and I see so much that could be done to help so many people. Number one thing you do, like, let's, let's say you find out on, this, on the 15th or the 16th, um, that because because in your race there's only two of you so whoever gets the most votes is going to win. That is correct. This is entirely over May 15th. So w what's the first thing you do when you walk into that office? Oh, I thought you were going to say what's the first thing I do, and I was going to say my wife and I are going to get the hell out of here and relax for a week and get our bearings again. But, <laughs> but the first day, the first day I get in office, here's what I would do, literally, because I'm going to have seven months to plan for this. You don't. The new board doesn't start until right. January. I would, one, propose that the 13.7% raise that commissioners gave themselves that we are paying for with our tax money be rescinded. And it be rescinded until voters get a chance to either approve that or not, because they gave themselves a raise without ever going to the voters. That's number one. Number two, um, I'm going to direct legal, well, you got to have three votes to do anything, right? But we're going to try. You're going to make a. Yeah. You're going to make alliances. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and then definitely, and direct legal staff to do an about face. I mean, right now we have various citizens groups that are trying to develop initiatives so we can vote on them. To me, that's what democracy is all about. It's letting people have some control over their own future, and this group of commissioners um, sets up. Pre, you know, pre-mitigated ro legal roadblocks, and says it wasn't structured right. So what I would do is I direct legal staff to work with every citizens group that wants to have an initiative, help them structure it correctly, eliminate the frivolous ones, but those that are real and solid. Instead of having them waste time getting thousands of people to sign petitions for it to go nowhere, um, I would want to be more efficient in county resources and facilitate that. Um, I could tell you, it won't be my first meeting, Rick, but um, I can tell you that I absolutely disagree um, with a lot of a, a few aspects of the county budget. For example, um, county residents to me are what county government is all in, is in business to serve. Uh, we have over a $600 million annual county budget. Commissioners gave themselves each a $10,000 raise, and in this world, how much money is spent on constituent service, the most important thing we've got? $4,000 per commissioner. That's it, $4,000 per commissioner. So I would wanna change that. I think the people come first. Number two, um, Lane County taxpayers, you and I, uh, over 250 million of our dollars, over a quarter billion of our dollars, are invested in various investment instruments from three months to three year maturity levels. Almost all of that goes to Wall Street corporations. None of it is invested locally to create jobs and to move the economy. 250 million, that's invested in things like Toyota Finance, Honda, Wells Fargo Bank, US Bank. This is wrong as far as I'm concerned. So I would want to immediately start planning to move a majority of that money to be invested in Lane County. And of that money, this is kind of interesting since we have a minute, um, of that money, you'd think, okay, well, if they're investing it all out of our county, maybe we're getting some enormous interest rate back to justify that. We're getting 1% interest back on that loan. 1%. And where does that go? It goes to backfill the county budget. My opinion is that that 1%, even it's still two and a half million a year. And what we as a county ought to do is create a separate fund. It's the people's money. It's not the government's money. And that fund ought to be designated for neighbors helping neighbors. So that, so that in our communities, 
you know, people on the ground are helping seniors sometimes go shopping, go to church, clean their yard. Various others are acting as mentors to young people or coaches to young people. Others in their garage I've seen have computer labs for kids, their latchkey kids. Many working single parents need daycare. That's what that fund ought to go for. And, and we, we need to re-knit our community from the ground up. So Joe, somebody on here is asking, and I realize this doesn't have direct uh, connection to the county commissioners, but they're asking, and you, and you can answer this later, you can okay. answer it right here. They're asking about IP43 and IP44, the uh, gun stance uh, that the governor's come out with, this initiative. Um, what, where's, where's your position on that? Well, you're, you're right, it doesn't pertain to the county, but it does, and it's a fair question. Um, I'm a Second Amendment believer. Um, I am not a gun control guy, but I am a background check guy. So where I come out on that is there's a state law that requires background checks, and I would have the commissioners um, enforce state law. And I, my wife has two children that were right there at Thurston during the Thurston shootings. She's a, a smart reading volunteer in our granddaughter's elementary school. She can't go in there without the angst of saying, what if someone came and, and shot this place up? Where would the children go? The angst level is amazing. So again, for the Second Amendment, not for gun control, for background checks. Let me ask you this, because um, we talked to somebody, oh God, I don't know, I've been doing this so much. Um, <laughs> I so, haven't. Timber. I mean, okay, okay. <laughs> so Timber, um, what, what, where's, your, where's your position on, on timber um, in terms of, uh, you know, the county? Because, you know, when we used to get ONC funds, a, a good chunk of our budget came from ONC funds. And then people got shocked when all of a sudden that money was gone. And the county does have a, you know, it does have a tough time with its budget. I mean. Yeah. Well, I think we can, there's a lot of examples of spending the money we do have more wisely. One. Two, and I'll get to it. Two, um, again, if we move money in the county, we will increase tax revenues for the county. But to deal with this, um, I'm not an anti-timber guy. Uh, I, I am in, interested in the proper kind of stewardship and forest management. But, it, but again, the politicians try and make divide us, right? So my opponent's big thing, who gets, who, who comes from a timber family, who his money all comes um, from resource extraction groups, all of it. Um, they've even developed a separate group and are laundering money through New York for negative ads against me. I, what a wonderful world we live in, right? But anyway, um, I don't believe one industry should have to bear the brunt of, of helping finance county government, especially an industry that used to employ over half of all the people in Springfield. Now in Lane County, they employ less than 10%. I mean, and, and that's just the way it is. So but it's innovation. To, to bring it, because there's yeah. some, in Springfield, well, there's some really cool things going well, on with, you know, laminated beams and, and still keeping the timber industry. Which but, is good stuff. Yeah, urban yeah. lumber yeah. is yeah. just salvaging, you know, people, logs that people used to just burn, and that, now they're making expensive furniture yeah, out of it. Yeah, you and, know and, I mean? and this, I'm good friends with the San Filippos that own urban lumber, and it's wonderful. And value added is wonderful. I think, so I, I am not anti-forest industry, but I'm also not having one industry control the discussion or the policies of the county commissioners. I would listen to the employers of the other 90% of us and try and develop some mechanisms where everyone is, is putting in their fair share to help this county grow. So I think you've asked everything. So um, you guys, if you have other questions, put them in the comment section here, and then Joe can go back and read. You're going to get a second. Hold on. But then you guys can go back and read, and he can answer your questions for you personally um, if, uh, if you have other things you want to talk to him about, because it's really simple to go in there and just answer their questions okay, as they okay. do it. And then everyone else will see the answers as well, because it will ping back to them. So and it's a really great way to just be in touch with people and what they're thinking. And I'd be delighted to. I, um... Give them your last, um, your last pitch without pitching. Well, How's not, that for an intro? Oh, <laughs> well, a little bit about my past, perhaps. Sure, or, go for it, Joe. Yeah, so again, um, working guy, um, was a tenured high school teacher. Um, what's been really, uh, been, it's been very gratifying for me. The last time I taught high school was 40 years ago. Um, 12 of those students from 40 years ago have uh, supported the campaign. Uh, one of them actually drove up and has been canvassing for me. That's awesome. Um, isn't that cool? Yeah. I mean, I'm, those are the kind of stories I'll just share. Um, in the 90s, I, I mentored a young man for two years from Springfield High School. We lost track of one another over the years. And after one of my campaign events, his name is Ray Kolasar, 
and he uh, and he works at Far West Steel now. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And he contacted me and he said, uh, "You changed my life. Thank you for caring so much about a broken young man." And that really touched me. Um, I've lost. Um, I have three kids that I've raised. Um, we lost their mother to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, 15 years ago, and so I kind of, um, kind of honkered down for a couple of years, stopped the work I was doing then in, in education and workforce training, uh, and made sure these children were okay. I'm, I'm very proud to say that the oldest son uh, is a Army veteran, and he's had two tours of duty you know, protecting our country in South Korea and the Middle East, and my youngest uh, is in law enforcement. Um, so I've raised children. Um, I myself, and, and I don't go around you know, gabbing about this, but one of the reasons I'm really interested in expanding health care as much as is fiscally pragmatic and responsible, I'm a guy that has been uninsurable for all my life. For 55 years, I've had insulin-dependent diabetes. I've literally, Rick, had over 78 thousand insulin injections Ugh. to be standing with you today. <laughs> and, oh, man. And I'm, I really believe in hope and in life and in working hard and giving it our best. And I really think that that's, my campaign has tried to be aspirational, to aspire. Um, we've had a campaign Facebook ad that's had over 30,000 views and, and that was its message. So I'm just giving it a shot for the little guy, for everybody, for open government, and for much more effectively investing the money that we do have. All right, Joe. So you guys, again, uh, Joe, just like every other candidate that comes on here, uh, pays a fee to do this. So um, we're full disclosure with that, letting you know. I let him come up with what he wants to talk about, and we just answer questions for you. If you have other questions, put them on here because Joe can look back at this for the next couple of days and answer them for you. Um, now, here's the, the guilt trip part. Um, you live in Oregon. We mail your ballot to your door. The only thing we don't give you is a pen to mark it up. If you don't vote, you don't get to bitch. So vote. Um, it, it's, you know, it is, does matter. And do research your candidates. And don't get your information out of the voters' pamphlet because those are paid ads. It's a propaganda piece. And people just put what they want you to hear in there. So you've got to do your research like this. This is why we do this is so you can hear from the people um, what they are and who they are. And then you get to decide. That's how, how voting works. That's how this, uh, this place we live in America works. But if you don't participate, it doesn't work right. So don't complain if you don't vote. Um, that's it for here. Again, his name's Joe Burney, and uh, you'll see his name on your ballot. And in Springfield. in Springfield. If you live in Springfield, you get to vote on him. Um, and uh, again, do your homework. And we'll be back at noon or so with, with provisions. And next week, we got everything from the week after. We're going to be talking about urban growth boundaries in the future here, what we can do about that with local realtors, all kinds of things like that. So um, have a great weekend. Um, we'll talk to you guys later. If you uh, liked what you heard here, share this on your page so other people can be informed and, and educated. Um, and don't worry about what party they're in because they're just looking for a person. They're not looking for a party. All right. See you guys later. Bye-bye.